Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us on Kremlin News First at Four. I'm Tom Sherry. Great to have you with us. I'm Jane McCarthy. The Guardian newspaper is reporting ties now between state lawmaker Matt Shea and a group that provides what they call training for biblical war. Yeah, the group reportedly provides combat and gun training too. The paper reported that it had received emails between Shea and a group called Team Rugged. They're based in Stevens County and the group's founder said in emails that they provide patriotic and biblical war training, including lessons on how to use guns in combat. Team Rugged also said that some of its training was based on works by a controversial preacher who trains Christians for armed battle, according to the paper. The Guardian also claims Shea funneled campaign money to that group. Now, Shea is already under investigation by state lawmakers, so does this latest claim change anything? Krem 2's Taylor Vito looked into that. Hi, Taylor. Well, hey guys, at this hour, there's no new word from both local and state Republican leaders as to this latest story on Shea. It comes on, well, what, excuse me, it comes on what's already been a controversial year for the Spokane Valley lawmaker. Live with Team Rugged here at Marble Washington. During the this is part of a video posted to so, Matt Shea's uh, Facebook page in 2017 Patriot at Lance. an event in Stevens County. These doing? clips were tweeted by the Washington so State Rugged Democratic Party. What is Team Rugged? What are you guys doing? They did, but so I was tasked Team Rugged is basically a school of learning for young men to uh, give them all the foundational learning and skills that they need to be effective in Christian warfare. It's that idea of Christian or biblical warfare that Shea has caught flack for promoting in the past. You'll recall that in 2018, Shea was accused of distributing a document titled Biblical Basis for War. Now Shea is accused of paying the founder of Team Rugged and connecting allies with the group. Uh, we're exercising our liberty and our rights. We reached our out to both Washington to, uh, House Republicans and both the state and county GOP parties about this. Family. At this hour, we're waiting to hear back. House Democrats declined to comment. This story has many of you commenting on our Facebook page, though. Leah commenting, quote, Keep your chin up, Matt. We know how the media puts a negative spin on their reporting of you. Aaron commented, quote, I have a feeling this is another lie or minimum twisting of the story. On the other hand, Robert said, quote, this is by definition a domestic terrorist and should be looked into as such. Now, Shea is already under investigation by the Washington State House. The House last month signed a contract with a former FBI agent to look into whether Shea has planned or promoted political violence. At this point, that investigation is still in its early stages, a spokesperson tells me. These latest developments won't have any immediate impact, it appears. Investigators aren't required to issue a final report on Shea to lawmakers until December. I did email Shea for comment on this. I haven't heard back yet at this point. I wasn't able to find contact information for Team Rugged either, and it appears their Facebook page has since been deleted. In the studio, Taylor Vido, Cram T News. Taylor, thank you very much. Turning to breaking news this afternoon, here is a live look at Philadelphia. This is near Temple University, where a gunman shot and wounded at least five Philadelphia police officers. This happened just over an hour ago, and police tell CBS the injuries the officers sustained are believed to be non-life-threatening. Officers showed up to serve a search warrant at a building, and then a gun battle broke out. Officers say a male suspect is still inside the property and was firing at officers within the last hour. We will be watching this breaking story carefully throughout the night. Well, the stocks were in free fall today after the bond market sounded another warning bell about the economy. It's the kind of red flag that experts say can signal a recession. The Dow closed down 800 points. That is the biggest drop of the year. The Nasdaq slipped 200. 42 and the S&P shed 85 points. Those losses come a day after stocks rallied on news that President Trump postponed plans uh, for the um, for more tariffs on Chinese goods. But concern about the ongoing trade war persists. Experts predict that despite the uncertainties, the market will still see growth this year. So could actually provide a buying opportunity. We shall see. Mm -hmm. And Tom, you are tracking some great summer weather for the Spokane area, but uh, you were talking about some storms to the north. Yeah, we're seeing them up around the Enchilium area and also into Chewila. Uh, we're talking about seeing even a flash flood uh, up there, or flood advisory, I should mm -hmm. say. Follow me over here to the wall. We'll show you some of the 
comfortable summer weather that we're enjoying. My gosh, 82 degrees in Coeur Lane, 85 in Spirit Lake, 82 out towards the Spokane Valley. Medical Lake, you're at 88 degrees, Nine Mile Falls right now at 86. These are the storms that we were talking about where we're enjoying beautiful weather across most of the broadcast area. You've got storms to the north of us. Some have moved over Nordman, Idaho, uh, Priest Lake and near Bonners Ferry. And then of course we have this particular storm right here that we're keeping an eye on. This one now, it looks like it's beginning to fall apart or decrease in intensity as it moves past Chewila. Uh, but again, it did move over in Chileam and did uh, actually get a flood advisory that was in effect, that is in effect until 615 tonight. But you can see as this system moves to the east of north and east of Chewila, it seems to lose its really heavy rain component. So we're talking about seeing temperatures in the 80s this evening. We'll continue with mostly clear skies, cool temperatures overnight with a low of 58, partly cloudy tomorrow. There is a chance of a sprinkle tomorrow. Not going to be an all day thing, just maybe a passing sprinkle, and we may see a better chance of the of some shower activity over in the mountains of northern Idaho for the weekend, though. My gosh, look at that 83 on Saturday, 84 on Sunday, partly cloudy skies or mostly sunny skies uh, by Saturday afternoon into Sunday. So let's enjoy this. Only two more weeks of August. Last blast. Last blast. All right. Thanks, Tom. Well, crews are slowly making progress on the Williams Flats fire. It has burned more than 45,000 acres on the Colville Reservation. It is now 65% contained. The fire has been burning nearly two weeks now. Crews think lightning sparked this fire. Some evacuation notices for the Williams Flats fire still in place. Level one notices are in place for areas south of Four Corners. This also applies to the Lake Roosevelt shoreline along Nine Mile Hellgate Road. And the North Mill Creek fire is near Col near Colville now fully contained. By the way, that fire burned 423 acres. It was burning on U.S. Forest Service land in Stevens County, about two hours away from that larger Williams Flats fire. Crews are now in the mop up stage. The fire started last Thursday, but still unclear on how it started. And some roads are still closed. North and Middle Fork Mill Creek Road, along with Rocky Creek Road and Bestrom Road, remain closed. Meantime, crews mopping up the CCC fire. This is near Cataldo, Idaho. It has burned a little more than 450 acres. Firefighters say this fire is now 90% contained. The fire is burning on industrial timber property, and they're not sure yet what sparked this fire. CCC Road from Cataldo to Wall Ridge Road now closed. The trail of the Coeur d'Alene's from Cataldo to Kingston also still closed. So is Road 259 on the backside of Cataldo Mountain. There are no evacuation orders in place for this fire. And approximately 30 homes in the small town of Marshall depend on a local well. But last week that well pump stopped working. Now the community is relying on water donations. The Eastern Washington University Fitness Center is offering up their locker room facilities if any of the folks there in that town want to use them while the problem is still being resolved. Big changes coming for students who've stored their guns in the past with Washington State University Police. The school says it cannot continue the program because of a state law. Mark Hanrahan joins us now with more. Mark. Good afternoon, Jane. For years, WSU has offered that program where students can store their guns safely with campus police. Police said it was mainly students who wanted to store their hunting rifles there. Well, campus police even had that so-called gun check offices where students brought their firearms again to be stored. They have offered that service for the past 40 years, but they just announced they are discontinuing it. The reason a new state law that dictates law enforcement must run a background check on individuals before they can return their guns to them. And the campus police say that added time and effort is simply too cumbersome for their agency. Meantime, Washington Administrative Code states that students cannot possess firearms or other dangerous weapons on university premises or in university housing. And that means students who live on WSU's campus will now need to find another storage option that is off campus. We'll bring you much more on the story coming up during our 5 p.m. newscast. For now, guys, we'll send it back to you. Well, there is a viral image going around that claims that, quote, problems with Congress can be explained in one graph. It breaks down the makeup of our current Congress, but as our verified team found, it's not exactly accurate. Here's Jason Puckett. 
The image looks simple enough, claiming to explain the problem with Congress in one graph. It compares Congress to the rest of America and breaks down demographics, but our research shows they've got all their numbers wrong. Let's verify. First, the claim of millionaires in Congress. Image says it's 51%. That's wrong. Rollcall.com has been keeping track of the net worth of congressional members since 1990. They found out that about 40% of the recent Congress were millionaires. So that number is exaggerated by about 10 to 13%. Next, the claim of white men in Congress, 77% in the image. Well, Pew Research Center data shows that number is actually the percentage of all white members of Congress, including women. So white men at 77% false, it's actually closer to 62%. Next, the total number of women in Congress. Image says 20%. Well, data from Legistorm, a database of congressional information, shows that's wrong. The House is about 24% female, the Senate about 25. Not the biggest difference, but the chart is wrong. Finally, age. The image says 67% of Congress is older than 55. Legislative data shows that number is actually low. 87 senators and 343 representatives are older than 55. That's about 80% of Congress. So bottom line, this image is false. It has outdated or wrong numbers. The real numbers show the percentage of millionaires and white men in Congress are down, while percentages of women and members older than 55 are up. Got another claim for us? Send us an email. With your Verify, I'm Jason Puckett. Just one more reason you have to kind of double check what you read yeah. on the internet, right? Well, more than two dozen states and cities are challenging the Trump administration's decision to roll back restrictions on coal burning power plants. In a lawsuit filed yesterday, they argue the president's new plan endangers the environment. Crime Tree's Whitney Ward joins us now in the studio with more. Whitney? Good afternoon, both of you. So New York's attorney general is the one who is leading this coalition of more than two dozen states and cities that are now suing the Trump administration over the Environmental Protection Agency's rollback of those restrictions on coal burning power plants. So Washington, California, Oregon and Colorado are just some of the states that are now on that list. President Trump, who campaigned on bringing back coal jobs, has been working to replace those Obama era clean power plans, which set limits on carbon pollution at existing power plants. The Trump administration finalized its new plan back in June, arguing that it will give states more flexibility to upgrade coal plants and help middle income Americans with rising energy costs. We are working cooperatively with the states to provide an affordable, dependable and diverse supply of energy that continues to get cleaner and more efficient. So critics are worried, though, about costs to public health as well as the environment. The legal battle, of course, is expected to go on for many, many years. It could even make its way to the U.S. Supreme Court. So we will certainly keep you posted every step of the way. Tom, Jane, back to you.